Views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of Bronxnet or the program underwriters. And good morning, everybody, and welcome to Open the Cruise in the House. Give yourselves a big round of applause. Yes, yes, yes. It's a show that brings the Bronx and the world to you. I've got you covered like a blanket. I'm the Doc Bob Lee, and we have a fantastic show lined up for you today. Coming up, we'll take a look at an event promoting heart health filled with activities, education, and a whole lot more. Plus, Kids Comic Con is coming up, and we'll check out a wheelchair basketball game leading up to the event, and we'll take, a whole, we'll take place and we'll talk to the beautiful people who are gonna be on the set. And then we'll hear the unique story of a local singer and pianist and find out about her work in the community and in the world of music. After that, ready, set, goals! We'll get a preview of an upcoming vision party to bring in the new year and beyond. And then my man Bobby C. has the latest in the headlines of the world of the sports. And I'm sure he's going to bring in Kobe Bryant and talk about that tragic uh, accident that took place the other day. And then later on, we'll discover where local artists can go for open mic sessions to share their work. So stay tuned. All this and more is headed your way because we are now officially open. open. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello everybody, I'm your host, the Doc Bob Lynn. You are watching Open. It's a live interactive program that brings the Bronx to New York City straight to your TV set. So stay connected to us through social media at BronxNet TV. Leading things off on February the 1st, Pink Goes Red. It's a heart health event. It's gonna take place in your community. And joining us with all the details, we have Erwin Warner of the Bronx Delta Sigma Theta alumni. She's uh, with that chapter. And Donna Joseph of Alpha, Alpha Cow Alpha. <laughs> Alpha, Kappa, Alpha, ETA, Omega, Omega chapter, yeah. I forgot to do my Peter Piper pick the pick the pick the peppers this morning. <laughs> so good morning, guys. Good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Uh, tell us about what you're doing. Uh, so my name is Donna Joseph. I'm the president of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Eight Omega Omega chapter. There you go. You see, it rolled right off your tongue. <laughs> <laughs> and we have national initiatives that we um, focus uh -huh. our programs on. Yes. So one of the major targets is health. And we have an impact day. It's mm -hmm. called Pink Goes Red. So we teamed up with Delta Sigma Theta because um, heart health is important across the board for women. Uh, I, and I see the combination of the pink yes. goes red. I get it. Yes. I get it. I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm Erin Warren. I'm a member uh, of the health committee, um, Bronx Alumni Chapter of Delta mm -hmm. Sigma Theta. It's already incorporated. So um, what I'm super excited this year is that we've introduced um, self-care uh -huh. um, into our program. Um, Self-care is one of our health initiatives this year. Yes. So we have a massage therapist coming um, to speak about different techniques on how to reduce stress because that also links back to a healthy heart. Yeah, I mean, I like it. I like it. How long have you guys been doing this? Um, we started collaborating six years ago. This will uh -huh. be our sixth event. And I'm proud because this is the first year we have to move to a larger location because we've Look outgrown, at right, right away. We've right outgrown away. Um, the, the space that we had prior to. So uh -huh. we also partner with American Heart Association. Yes. Um, Morris Heights Community and Black Nurses Association. Uh, oh, oh, so you're with uh, Tara Martin in, in the group there? I know Tara. See? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going up to Albany. We're going to do some things up there, too, mm -hmm. for the, uh, the so, caucus um, weekend. Right, yeah. right, in yes. February. Yes. Mm -hmm. So in addition to massage therapy and self-care, we also focus on blood pressure screenings, blood glucose screenings. Mm -hmm. We uh -huh. do some physical activity with Zumba. So it gets everybody started for the month of February. Yeah. So if we put on some music, can you show us how you're going to do the Zoom? <laughs> I could do a little bit for you. <laughs> do a little bit. <laughs> Get everybody moving in the morning. Yeah, so it's, it's really a wonderful fun. thing. Mm -hmm. um, so you're always doing great things for people. Uh, are you working with any of the colleges and universities? Um, we do partner with mm -hmm. colleges and universities um, with 
tank goes red, we try to have it at a large enough location. Uh -huh. um, so we usually um, have it at community centers, and then we move towards schools, and uh, now we're going into um, Forest Gym that was just mm -hmm. um, renovated. So this is going to take place on what date? February 1st. February so next 1st. Saturday mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. at Forest Gym. Forest Gym, that's over at... Uh, in the McKinley houses off 163rd. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 163rd off the concourse? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, so everyone feel free to um, sign up uh, via Eventbrite. Um, uh -huh. You can find the Eventbrite link on our chapter website, www.dsbvx.org. Mm -hmm. So besides the massages and everything, and what can people expect when they come down? Um, they, have, they can get tested for um, blood pressure and blood glucose. Oh, okay. um, also, we'll have healthy um, eating demonstration with smoothies. It's an activity for adults and children, so there's usually oh. kickboxing for the children. Oh, yeah. And there's Zumba, and we also will be having an eye doctor on site to connect yes. it with the diabetes. Yes, oh, yeah. our very own um, chapter member, Dr. Nanette Francis Hayding. She will be um, yeah. providing um, tips on, you know, just bringing awareness on how um, diabetes links back to healthy eye care. Yeah, I like it. All right, so you got screenings and everything going down. No line, no wait. People are going to be all over the place. So you can stop here, get your blood pressure checked, get your glucose level and all that stuff. I like it. Yes. I like it. And you could definitely follow us on social media. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So we're hashtag Bronx AKs. We usually go live. You usually see feed afterwards. So it's just been growing for the last six years. There you go. Yes. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. How, do, how have you guys come together? Because you lead organizations and sororities and fraternities. I think, histor I mean, we're, we're separate organizations with the same focus. Mm -hmm. So yeah. arts, black family, education. Yes. So um, it just seemed, scholarship, it just seemed. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I would say, you know, when you have a group of people helping others get what they need out of life, it doesn't matter. Let's all partner exactly. up, moving together in the same direction for a common cause. Exactly. Yeah. And heart disease is very important amongst women. So why not get the two sororities together to focus on that. Um, okay. And then February 7th is National Wear Red Day, mm -hmm. so that a lot of women across the board will be wearing red to further bring attention to there health awareness, go. heart awareness. Pink goes red. Yes. All right. Um, is there a website you can go to? Yes, you could go to aka-8omegaomega.com and then also... Um, Delta Sigma Theta, so www.dstbx.org. All right, the deltas and the omegas. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Sure. And come back again and share uh, yes. okay. some of the, the pictures and videos and all that stuff when you come back again. Okay. All right. Thank yes. you guys. Thank Pink you. goes red. <laughs> I've got to take a quick break. We'll be back with more Open next.
welcome back. You know, on February the 1st, a wheelchair basketball game will take place to raise funds for this year's Kids Comic Con. And joining us with all the details, we have Alex Simmons, co-founder of Kids Comic Con. We welcome you to the show. Good morning. Thank all you right. for having Good me. Good morning. So tell us all about it. You've been doing it for how long, and wow. how does it look? How does it feel? Where's it going to be? How all much time we got? <laughs> just keep going. Yeah, okay. So Kids Comic Con is an initiative that was started over 13 years ago. Yeah. Um, Eugene Adams is the other co-founder. He's a director of educational outreach for Bronx Community College. Uh -huh. We met. We both, you know, were into comics, reading, literacy, all of that. And I was teaching workshops for kids, and we just started talking about wouldn't it be great to be able to do an event for kids, especially in this yeah. community, because you know it's a little expensive downtown when you go to some of these others. So 2007, we did one on the campus. I invited a lot of artists. I write comics. Yeah. So I invited a lot of the artists and editors I know. They came up. It just, vendors came, and before mm -hmm. you knew it, instead of this little bitty thing, we had something like 45 artists who were there to meet the kids, talk to them, do workshops with them, and we had something like yeah. 800 people turn out that, that first time, and we've been doing it ever since. Uh, we've also traveled uh, a little bit up and down the East Coast from Buffalo to Florida. Yeah. And yeah. in 2010, we went to Africa, in oh, Senegal. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. The University of Dakar and a school, the Senegalese American Bilingual School. Try and say that six times fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but in collaboration with them and the American Embassy, we did two, uh, 10 days there of workshops yeah. and working with uh, something like 1,500 kids in, in the city of uh, Dakar. Yeah, I, I like it. So you're moving around and getting that exposure and letting people know creating that, that, that great awareness. Tell us about the game. The game, well, um, one of the artists who came to us about three years ago, actually started volunteering photographer there, but he started drawing and everything. His name is Jimmy Jeffries. He's, um, I think the most political way to say this is he, ha he has uh, his, his legs uh, have been, you know, you'll see a photograph of him, I think. Big I up to one. JJ. Yeah, but anyway, Jay, uh, he's just a wonderful guy. Um, he loved the event, and he said, you know, I would love to do something for this. And he's a member of the Bulova Nets wheelchair basketball team oh, in New Jersey. Really? And they do a lot of these events all over. So he said, let's do a wheelchair basketball fundraiser for Kids Comic Con. So his team of all wheelchair-bound uh, basketball players, not professionals, but they, they do it well, yeah. uh, will go up against our team, the KCC Comets, which are all volunteers. So it'll be some high school students, it'll be some artists, it'll be just people who are not wheelchair-bound. So you should see this yeah. game. It's going to be funny. It's going to be funny but great. You ever hear of a man by the name of uh, Hank Carter? No, I didn't. And he has said something called Wheelchair Charities Incorporated. Oh, okay. And they named the hospital, the old North General Hospital in Harlem. They named that hospital after him, the Henry J. Carter Hospital. No, I didn't know about that. And he deals with uh, mostly people who not, we, he dealt with the Nets and the NBA to come together to raise money for people uh, in wheelchairs. Mm -hmm. So maybe you should get to, I'll, you know, well, we'll hook up. We'll, well get some information it would be too. great. We're, we're also working with the Wheelchair Sports Federation out of New Jersey. So to connect with this other group would yeah, be great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So definitely get the information for All right. So anybody can attend? Anybody can attend. The, 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 the uh, admission at the door is only $5. Uh, it's being held at the um, University Heights High School on St. Yeah. Anne's. So oh, okay, it's yeah. easy to get to. The two train, I think, is right near there. You got the buses. You can drive. There's parking believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Saturday, February 1st. You know, it's just for a couple of hours of good times and artists. And uh, one of the things that was donated to us for a raffle uh -huh. is a boxing glove owned and worn uh -oh. by Jake Raging Bull Lamada. Ah, yes. There you go. So we're going to be raffling that off also to help raise money for, you know, KCC and the events and things we do with kids. That's, that's excellent. That's excellent. You know, Iran Barkley lives up in the area. He's out of the Bronx. Iran Barkley, maybe we can get him to come on down also. You know, the door is wide Mark open. Raylan. Anybody yeah. you can get there to help, because it's all for kids. I mean, the, the bottom line of our organization for the past 13, going on 14 years, is to validate and support kids' imagination. Mm -hmm. If a child can't imagine that one day I want to grow up to be this, or one day I can grow up and do that, if they don't see that now, yeah. then they have trouble deciding, well, why do I need to learn anything? Why do I need to focus? Why do I need to do anything? You know, because nothing's going to happen. So yeah. we're about, you know, imagine the possibilities, then work out a plan to make that uh, a reality. And we have a lot of people who've been very supportive over the years. Yeah, and this helps out a lot of people, not only people in wheelchairs, but helping other oh, people to understand absolutely. that things like this need to go on. Absolutely, and it's also inspirational because again, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, you know, um, 
times are hard or I don't have this or I don't have that. And you see folks who theoretically Absolutely. are supposedly limited and they're not. They're not. And they're not. They're so, not. you know, if they can, you can. You know, it's, just, it, it's all about inspiration. They used to house a lot of people in wheelchairs um, on Roosevelt Island. Yes. Um, I was actually, I was born there. Yeah, see? See, yeah, yeah. And there was a man, you probably saw him riding around. He was on a, a, a long table and had wheelchair wheels on it so he can reach down. Yeah. And he was a half a person. Mm-hmm. But he didn't want you to see him as a half a person. And I didn't treat him that way and nobody else did. He can play pool, he'll whoop your tail <laughs> on that pool table. And that's the way, you know. Yeah. He wanted to be like a regular person. And he that's was. That's the way he treated And he treated absolutely him. was. Yeah. All the people that I've known who've been challenged physically or otherwise, my mother was le legally blind. It doesn't stop them. If the spirit is there, if the heart is there, the drive is there, the support is there, it doesn't stop them. Yeah. They yeah. do more than people expect. To them, it's norm. And, yeah. and that's the way it should be. And we should all get, like I said, a little inspiration from that. Absolutely. Where can we go to uh, get more information? Well, aside from the, the, the marvelousness of our website, which is kidscomiccon.com, we're on social media, just like everybody else. We're on social yeah. media. So we're on Facebook. We have a page. We're on Instagram as KCC Fun for All. And we're on Twitter as the Kids Comic Con. So, you know, literally, go to Facebook. Go to our website. We'll tell you exactly where to be, when to be there, and how much fun you'll have. Beautiful. Thank you. Same here. Couldn't have said it better. <laughs> Thank you. You the man. Yeah, I try. <laughs> no, no, you the man. <laughs> All right, we the man. We the man. That's, right. that's two men. Yes, that's dos men. Right. <laughs> <laughs> There you go. You need any volunteers, anybody to absolutely, help out? Absolutely, absolutely. Reach us, uh, reach out to us, Wait, rather. I have a camera. You oh, we have a 30 camera? Seconds, 30, 30 seconds. Reach out to us on our website or on our Facebook page, kidscomiccon.com. And if you want to volunteer, we'd love to have you there. Absolutely. And the website again is? Kidscomiccon.com. Alex Simmons, co-founder of kidscomiccon.com. Eugene Adams, big up to you. Yeah. We'll see you the next time, too. Come back, bring some pictures and videos and all that. You got okay? it. Pleasure. You got Thank it. you. All right, we're going to take a quick break. But I promise we'll be right back with more next. Blunt Squad TV from the Bronx, New York City. I'm your host, Supreme. Join us as we visit events interviewing music artists, TV, and movie celebrities. We'll be stopping by restaurant hotspots around the city, trying out a variety of dishes, also checking out food festivals. Tune in Sundays at 11.30 p.m. in the Bronx on BronxNet TV, Omni Channels, Verizon, Fios 34, and Optimum 68. Streaming online, BronxNet.tv. Did you know that brain and spinal cord tumors are the deadliest form of pediatric cancer? They can happen to anyone. I'm not hungry. My tummy hurts. You can help us be part of the solution. Get in here. Hurry. You can be part of our family. It's okay. Please support our mission today. Making Headway Foundation, dedicated to the care, comfort, and cure of children with brain and spinal cord tumors. What's up, guys? It's the girls, The Essence here, right on the set of the The Essence show. Please tune in each and every Wednesday at 9 p.m. Files 34, Optimum 68, and live streaming, BronxNet.tv. Oh, you better get in line. And welcome back, everybody. Our next guest is a musician who aims to positively inspire people through her work. And we are pleased to welcome Larissa Gravois and her manager, Irina Perlman. Welcome Hello, to the, welcome. It's How are nice you guys to be doing? Here. We're great. Um, I heard a lot nice about you guys be before you got here. <laughs> so you're doing some wonderful things. You have a, a number of uh, books here, and you guys sing. And tell us about it. Well, she sings. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm a singer and a pianist. I'm a uh. songwriter and composer. And I'm also an inspirational presenter on autism awareness yes. through music. And I'm a recording artist and aspiring children's book uh -huh. author. And so classically here. trained singer, pianist, songwriter, composer, and an inspirational presenter on autism awareness through music. And you've been doing it since the age of 27. 
Oh, no, she's uh, 20. no. You're 27 now. That's, yeah. so she's yeah. been doing it since. And how did this come into, into being? How did you get into what you're doing now? So I got my start on stage at age 10 at a community theater in my hometown of Leonia yeah. as a workhouse orphan in Oliver. Uh-huh. Yeah. And the name of the theater is Summer Stage at Leonia, which is now a pretty well-known theater company. Mm -hmm. And then I continued to perform with them pretty much throughout middle school and high school in different shows like The Music Man, Oklahoma, Carousel, and Annie Get Your Gun. All right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good Wait, we need everybody that has to give her a big round of applause. Right on the count of three. One, two, three. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And at Thank home, you. they're applauding for you, too. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thank you, Leonia. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So you've been doing this uh, throughout your college years and after graduation? Yes, college has been a very busy time for me, and I've been involved with opera mm -hmm. productions. So while I was getting my bachelor's in music therapy, I sang the role of Kate in the Pirates of Penzance as part of the Gilbert and Sullivan Opera Company, and I sang the role of Zerlina in a Don Giovanni production. Mm -hmm. And after college, I sang in the Magic Flute, Finding Cinderella, and other opera productions. Mm -hmm. And well. you sing in other language besides Russian. How did that come about? Yes, so um, that actually plays into my solo work uh -huh. since I know some Russian. Both my parents are originally from Russia. And met in the Bronx. <laughs> I yeah. met my husband in the Bronx. Yeah, did. That's right. Indeed. In the Bronx. <laughs> All right. yeah. So for about five years, um, I gave solo concerts of Russian romances as a member of the Pushkin Society mm -hmm. in America, an organization whose mission is to preserve Russian culture in the United States. And I held celebratory concerts for the society in university, museum, and library concert halls, and other venues around the New York City and New Jersey area. So, for example, I performed a cabaret of art, chocolate, and wine in Brooklyn. Right. And more recently, I performed a cabaret-style concert called Unforgettable Songs Around the World. Um, she, which was she during sings in about ten languages. I'm, I'm amazed yeah, here. Yeah, yes. yeah. Thank which you. Ones, some so, ones too. Uh -huh. <laughs> besides Russian and, of course, English, I sing in Italian, French, Spanish, Hebrew, which is hmm, my mother actually speaks Hebrew. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So, what do you feel most comfortable with? Probably all of them, but give me one that you like. Um, besides, I personally feel comfortable with Chinese because. Um, when I was studying in Leonia High School, I chose to study that language. Mm -hmm. And it actually, even though I was like convinced it was gonna be hard, mm -hmm. well, many people say it's hard, but I didn't let it stop me. Since, Chinese, Korean. Chinese. Yeah, I've been studying music and that helped in Chinese, so since yeah, it's a yeah. tonal language, and I taught myself to read it's a Korean. It's a tonal, see a lot of people, a tonal language. Yes. yes, tonal. Tonal language. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that sound if I asked you to, Monk, can I ask her to sing it? Um, of course. Sure. Of course. Okay. Hey, little yes, and ding chang, draw to just your poor sweet to Japan, she hui fei, ye do ye shung, ye just should die, then die, ye could choose. And by the way, yeah. Blackbird, that Blackbird. there is a recording of the Chinese translation of the Beatles' Blackbird in... What? Really? Yeah, Blackbird in, in Chinese um, in um, this, this, this Ten central. Songs Around the World. Yes. Um, so in 2019, together with guitarist Mitchell Tonelson, we released three studio-recorded albums on the CD Baby platform. And they're now available on Lara Grabois CD Baby page. And uh -huh. you could also find my live performances on my website, yes. um, www.larissagmusic.info, and on YouTube, too. Excellent. And you're yeah. working with the, the Bullion Foundation also? And that, uh, yeah. th these are the yeah. three CDs right here, right? Yes. That mm -hmm. this one and that's Unique Arrangements and where we perform choral renditions of Scarborough Fair, Silent Night. Um, also, Santa Lucia as well. All kinds of well. interesting and oh original yeah. songs as well. And this, instrumentals. Yeah, this and this, one. last but not least, is 
The Voice of Autism, which is an album of my original autism awareness songs that I utilized to um, inspire in my autism awareness presentations mm -hmm. in communities. And so the names of the songs are Dreamers on Air, yeah. which is about young people with autism who are asking today's society to make room for them. All we want is to be dreamers on air. Thank you for searching for the key of why we're there. Maybe we were cloned by danger in the air, flying away from those who made no room to spare. Mom! <laughs> Mom! Mom manager? Mom manager. Mom, <laughs> wow. You have an amazing daughter here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. She is very hard oh, to call her a client. Uh, Thank daughter, you. Client? No, not client. No. <laughs> no, just daughter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and there's also no that you're worth it which I like to call the self-confidence yes. anthem, and Deep in the Forest, which is about children with autism and their special gifts. Yes, yes. Quoting from the song, what will bring the bits of the puzzle together? Can it be the honeydew, aroma of the soul? Can it be the child living in their hearts forever or an embrace from the world as a whole? Wow. A lot. There's a lot yeah. to say in a short yeah. period of time. Well, Mom, yeah. and, and you, you're with her every step of the way, right? How um, does that feel to be with such a talented uh, daughter? It feels very rewarding because. It makes you very proud. Yes, because, you know, Larissa um, um, grew up, was growing up on the autism spectrum herself and um, overcame many challenges. Yes. And um, amazing. Um, she amazing is, where she is, is today, and she's working very hard to spread awareness in the community. So you want to talk a Thank little you. bit about that? Yes. Yeah, so I present my original songs and music in um, autism and music therapy conferences, university programs for specialists who are specializing in autism and autism awareness fundraisers and mm -hmm. events. And when I present, I show visuals of my song lyrics on a projection screen for a more powerful impact. And every time I presented with that method, it really resonated well with the community. Yeah, mm -hmm. it really does wonders when um, they could read, read the lyrics, yes, um, yeah. listen to the music, and uh, the visuals with the lyrics, they really support the message. So it really... I love it. Uh, yeah, uh, how, how many languages do you speak again? You said five, um, six. Speak or sing? Speak, speak, speak or is sing. three, right? Well, three? I actually speak three. How many ways can you say I love you? Um, I can say, like, Я люблю тебя, Wa айни, саранхэ. I understood one, wa <laughs> <laughs> Chinese, wa <laughs> Yes, You're wa like, ni. whoa, I and ni, I love yes. you. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you guys so much for coming by. You have a website we can go to to see um, a lot of this? Yes. We, um, if we have yes. a chance, Lara has one book called My Name is Faye. It's uh -huh. in the works. It's going to be available oh, on great. Amazon about yes. an eight-year-old girl with autism. It's a wrap uh, from the point of view of an eight-year-old girl. And then there's oh. a picture of Larissa yes. when she yes. was little. So it's... And Maybe also Shy and Mine, I can do it myself. And These are I children's can do it books. Myself. All on Amazon. And there will it's also going to be on Amazon, coloring yeah. pages available yes. for children and their parents to download uh -huh. with a music track. Yes. Yeah, so How it's do you say be your mother's Amazon. name in Russian? Um, Same way. My mother's Russian. name? Irina. 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 <laughs> in Russian. Yes. And Irina. Irina. An Americanized version. Thank you so <laughs> much. All right. Thank you so much for Larissa. having us. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Did I say it? Larissa Grabois. That's correct. Right. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. We love you guys. Come back again, thank okay? Thank you so much. Of course. All right. Thank you. Very <laughs> good. Wait, hold on. We've got to take a quick break, but we'll be back with more Open Next. soon to the South Bronx in the hub. Inspire with your stories, culture, history. Your Bronx. I'm Bronxnet. 
Engage with us. Connect with us at your channels and at BronxNet.tv. Learn. Engage. Inspire. BronxNet TV. From the Bronx to the world. <laughs> BronxNet. <laughs> February the 1st, our next guest will host a vision board party. We'll tell you more. She's right here. She has all the details. She's founder of Talk Therapy NYC, Latoya Monique. Welcome to the Hi. show. <laughs> give a big hand, everybody. Oh, give me five. <laughs> yeah, five. We can do five. Is that the family there? That's the family. Who's here? My daughter and my son and my fiance. Hey, Hi. all right. Welcome. He's recording, too. Oh. <laughs> He's going to post you up. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he does. So tell us about what you're doing, vision boards and all of this. Yes, yeah, so I'm the founder of Talk Therapy NYC. It's a community-based uh -huh. um, organization where we link women, connect women um, together through therapeutic events. And one of the events coming up is our vision board party. Yeah. So, right. yeah, it's a goal-setting uh, party where you visualize your goals and dreams and aspirations. And you have yeah. fun doing it because you yes. know how to do this and you've been doing it for how long? Uh, well, for talk therapy, it's coming up on a year, oh, but okay. I've been doing events for a while. Yeah. But you know, when something like this is coming up, although mm -hmm. you've been doing it for about a year, mm -hmm. in your mind you play it over and over again on how you visualize it and how you want it to how be. How it's going to play out, vision. exactly, yeah. yeah. You yeah. have the vision board in your mind first. I do, yeah. I do, yeah. Yep, so, so I'm it's excited. Up, yeah. It's this Saturday. Mm -hmm. This Saturday. How's it going to look? People are going to come in and... It's through, um, it's ticket-based, so it's through Eventbrite. You're going to come, you're going to set up, you're going to mix and mingle with other women. You're going to set up. What is... So I, well, I'll have everything set up. Oh, um, okay. the uh The boards and magazines where you will cut out and, you know, eat and just mix and mingle and you yeah. visualize what you want your life to be like for this year. Okay, yeah. so for people who don't know, they have to. There's going to be boards and have to cut out stuff and write so stuff on the board. You can or? write, yeah. It's affirm. You write affirmations, things you would like to see your, how you would like to see a your yana, life. A, a yana, I know. I'm a yana, messing up. A yana, a yana. What? <laughs> a yana. Did you see that that version this year? No. The girl couldn't <laughs> pronounce her name. Oh Ayana, no, I didn't. A, a, a yana. Her, yeah, her. I, that. Ilanya. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and she had somebody do something like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so it's similar Manzant. to that. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So good. All right. People yeah. are gonna come in, and then what does that do for people when you write those things down, your affirmations and everything, and put them on a board? You see it, and now you know you can achieve it because it's there. You're visualizing it, and it's stuck with you. Yeah. I know for me, writing helps. So if I write down my goals and yeah. see it, then I have to accomplish it, uh, execute, basically. And you can post them in some of your favorite places. Like, a lot of people have that on the refrigerator. In the bathroom. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Some people mm -hmm. take that, that soap bar and write some things on that mirror. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not saying to mess up your mirror in your house. No, no, no. <laughs> but what I do, I, um, for my vision board last year, I took a picture of it, and uh -huh. I keep it in my car, in the dashboard. Uh -huh. So when I'm driving, you know, I visualize my vision yeah. Yeah, as yeah. well. So, yeah, it's different ways. Yeah, and, but. you know, they say, you know, you think it and you become you, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have to write it down, mm -hmm. see it, say it, use your senses, let it come and out of your mouth. believe it, yep. Write it down so you can see it. It goes mm -hmm. into your eyes mm -hmm. and say it goes into your ears. Mm -hmm. So you're using your senses. Mm -hmm. Oh, I've never heard that. Before, but, yeah, okay. I'm just saying, you know. You learn something new every day. But, yeah, yeah. that's exactly what it is. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. So, so you're you just can come. reinforcing everything. That's all, <laughs> yep. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what date are you going to have this again? So it's this Saturday, February 1st. Anybody's having something on February 1st? Yes. It's this well, Saturday. we have a busy yeah. Saturday yeah, coming up, so huh? come. So yeah. we should just do like a tour, stop mm -hmm. by these different places. Yep. Yeah, and yep. stop by yours. Should we stop by yours first or last? Depending on the time of everyone else's <laughs> event. But um, <laughs> just come on, say hi. Well, and, you always got to save the best for last. Save we're all, it's all good, it's all good. There Everybody, you go. Yeah. You're diplomatic, yeah. you're running for office or something. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to talk to your fiancé about this. She's oh. running for office, right? <laughs> <laughs> so that's good that you're doing this. You're helping mm -hmm. others get what they need out of life, and that's always important. I mm -hmm. always say that. Uh, who can be a part of it? You're looking for? Women in general, any 
women, wow. kids. My daughter is going to be there. So, right. you know, girls, women, that's it. Sorry, men. I love y'all, <laughs> but it's not for y'all. You see what they're going to yeah. do to us? They're going to yeah. hold us out on the outside for a little while. Just a little bit. Yeah, but yeah. you're going to be teaching us. Mm -hmm. you know, men can learn also from what's going to happen because they can write things down, too. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Not mm -hmm. they. We. We can write things down, mm -hmm. too, and put it on the board or put it mm -hmm. on the refrigerator and follow mm -hmm. some of those things that we would like to do in life. Yep. So, you know, I've done it. Good, I good. still continue to do it, you know. As you should. It's never mm -hmm. too late to, you know, say, hey, I, this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. Write it down and just follow it. Follow yeah. your dreams. Mm -hmm. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give up. Yep. There you go. Any final words? Any motivational, inspirational? Um, continue to be yourself. And, you know, if your passion is pure and you're not motivated by external factors, your time will come. So, yeah, that's one of my yeah. things. And. Follow Talk Therapy, NYC, and make sure you get a ticket. How did you get involved in this? I am big on connecting people. I'm a people's person, so mm -hmm. I like to bring people together. So yeah. that's what I do, even in my nine to five. That's what I do. So all right, yeah. So. And what would you like to? How would you like? How far would you like this to go? Where would oh. you like to see this? Oh, everywhere. Oh, um, <laughs> eventually, it's right now, and it's in New York City. But I would like it to be in Atlanta. I want it to be really huge. You want to go nationwide? Nationwide or we worldwide? Oh, everywhere. Well, there worldwide, you go. nationwide. <laughs> I just want it to be out there, and I want people to feel safe because it's like a safe space where you can just come and network and meet new women. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh oh, yep. I see a website developing that's going to be have a lot of information. It on is it and coming soon. Meeting places and mm -hmm. conventions. And yeah, that's what uh -oh. we do now. Oh, yeah, we kind of do that now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We just had a, a sipping clay, so pottery. We did pottery oh, and networking, excellent. so it was beautiful. Helping others get what they need out of life. I exactly. think that's important. Yep. What's your website? People can so we go. don't have a website now, but you can follow us on oh. Instagram. It's Talk Therapy NYC. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, information is on there for the event. The link is in the bio as well. So. All right. Yeah. Want to give a big shout out to anybody before we wrap? To myself. <laughs> oh. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's it. And um, yeah, I appreciate you. Thank All you. Right. Thank yeah. you. Thanks for Thank coming. You. Okay. Yeah. Latoya Monique, founder, Talk Therapy NYC. Give her a big round of applause, everybody. Yes, yes, show. To the beat, show. Here we go. All right, we've got to take a quick break. Uh, but up next, Bobby C. has the latest in the headlines of the world of sports. And uh, stay tuned because I know he's going to be talking about Kobe Bryant and uh, a few other wonderful things. It's coming up next right here on Open. Here we are, Jerome Avenue, the heart of the Bronx. This is where I grew up. Business is booming. People are moving. Everyone works hard. Nothing was handed to anyone here. I've been in here to take my passport pictures. I just bought flowers here for my mother. Oh, this is where I get my smoothies, by the way. Continuation. This is what we call the O, 170th Street. It feels so Bronx. Hey, my man Fonzie. We walked up and down the corridor. Nothing but love. And I'm glad to say that Jerome is home. It's time to get serious about your future. At Bronx Community College, you can earn an Associate of Applied Science degree and become a medical laboratory technician in as little as two years. Earn an average salary of over $50,000 a year in one of the most rewarding careers in medicine. All you need is a high school diploma or equivalent to get started. Those who qualify can get tuition covered by grants and scholarships. So why wait? For program details, contact Bronx Community College today. With heavy hearts on this Monday morning, like many places around the globe, we continue to pay tribute to one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Yesterday morning, Kobe Bryant and eight others passed away in a tragic helicopter accident in Calabasas, California. No survivors. Among those lost were Bryant and his 13-year-old daughter, 
Gianna Gigi, a rising hoop star in her own right. Bryant was trending in the news this past weekend for other reasons. The legendary Lakers star was saluted by current Lakers star LeBron James after the King passed Bryant on the all-time scoring list Saturday in Philadelphia. Bryant would return the salute in a form of a tweet on social media congratulating James. That would be the last that we would hear from Bryant before he died in a crash in Southern California early Sunday morning in an area about 30 miles northwest of the Staples Center. That's where Kobe starred as a player for more than a decade. It is also not far from the Mamba Academy Athletic Training Center where Kobe was both an owner and an active participant and where he was reportedly headed to coach his daughter's basketball game. Kobe had a 20-year NBA career that will send him to the Hall of Fame once he becomes eligible. He was a five-time NBA champion, a 15-time All-NBA player, NBA MVP, two-time scoring champion, two-time finals MVP, 18-time All-Star, a two-time gold medalist for Team USA, and a player who influenced a generation. His work ethic was legendary. Bryant teamed with Shaquille O'Neal in a combustible union that led the Lakers to NBA titles in 2000, 2001, and 2002. He then carried the franchise to two more titles in 2009 and 2010, both of which our Bronxnet cameras captured. Bryant retired in 2016 after scoring 60 points in his final NBA game. Of course he did. Although there are plenty of other sports going on in the world, it's hard to detail any of them this morning. This roundup and C-list goes out to Kobe Bryant. And here at Bronxnet, we wouldn't want it any other way. Last night, the Knicks and the Nets renewed their rivalry at the world's most famous arena. Fittingly, Kobe Bryant was the star. That was always the story when he came to town to play at the Garden. Here's more from MSG. Thanks to my boy and fellow Kobe loyalist, Reed Horner, for helping produce that. Here are my top five Kobe moments. Let's start at the beginning, July 1st, 1996. That's when L.A. Lakers general manager Jerry West boldly traded his starting center, Vladi Divac, to the Charlotte Hornets for a, you know, 17-year-old pro prodigy named Kobe Bryant from the Philadelphia suburbs by way of Italy. Nearly two decades later, Bryant became the top scorer in the history of the 16-time NBA champion franchise, which happened to be his favorite team growing up. Flash forward to June 2nd, 2002, still one of the greatest games in NBA history. Bryant scored 30 points in the Lakers' 112-106 overtime victory over the Sacramento Kings in Game 7 of the Western Conference Finals, ending one of the greatest playoff series in NBA history. The Lakers swept New Jersey to win their third straight title in the anticlimactic NBA Finals. Eight years later, that kid that watched the game on TV would be in the arena covering the NBA Finals. For us, that's me. June 17, 2010, that's when Kobe scored 23 points as the Lakers rallied to beat the Boston Celtics 83-79 in Game 7 of the NBA Finals, securing the 31-year-old's then fifth championship ring. He still called it the sweetest title of his career for multiple reasons, including the Lakers-Celtics rivalry and the difficulties faced in repeating after their 2009 championship. He celebrates by jumping on the scorer's table at Staples Center, now an iconic pose. I'm going to continue the bias here on my list of top five Kobe moments, and no, 
I'm not going to roll with his 81 point game or his 61 point game at the Garden or even his final game, another 60 point performance. I'm going to go with February 18th, 2007. That's the day that Kobe Bryant won All-Star Game MVP in Las Vegas. One of four he would secure in his amazing career. Kobe tallied 31 points, six assists, and six steals. Six steals in an All-Star Game. The West cruised past the East, 153-132. Kobe had 17 in the first half. My first and perhaps my best All-Star Game experience. Thank you, Kobe. And finally, November 29, 2015. That's the day Bryant announced his retirement in a post in the Players' Tribune. The decision was not totally unexpected, given that Bryant had repeatedly said in interviews he was considering making his 20th NBA season his last. After two decades, two Olympic gold medals, five championship rings, 17 All-Star selections at that point, an 81-point game that ranks as the second best in NBA history, and more than 32,000 career points, Bryant's career was officially winding down. Open quote, he said, I'm ready to let you go. I want you to know now so we both can savor every moment that we have left together. The good and the bad, we have given each other all that we have. Close quote, Bryant wrote in the post. Those are the moments and my final words here in the C-List. Grief-stricken players and teams around the NBA paid their respects to Kobe Bryant on Sunday in a myriad of ways as the stunning news of the former Lakers' great death shook the league. Nearly every team playing across Sunday's eight-game schedule, not long after it was learned that Bryant died, took a planned shot clock violation, 24-second violation. Teams took turns holding the ball for 24 seconds and eight seconds in the backcourt in honor of the number 24 and number eight jerseys that Bryant wore. Both are retired by the Lakers. He is the only player in NBA history with that honor. The tributes drew standing ovations across the board. Make no mistake about it. Kobe Bryant is one of the greatest basketball players ever, one of the greatest athletes ever. And he wasn't without mistakes along the way. His sexual assault case back in 2003, probably at the top of that list. But Kobe and his wife recovered from that, reconciling in a marriage that would produce four daughters. As much as my heart hurt for Kobe on Sunday. I believe the loss of Gigi was actually far harder to stomach. You see, Kobe lived some incredible 41 years. I'm pretty sure most of us would sign up for his 41 if told that's all that we could get. But Gigi was 13. She really had a lifetime ahead of her. The same goes for any of those other youngsters aboard the helicopter. It also made me think about Kobe in the second act of his life. He was doing so much outside of basketball, and that included being a great father to his family. At the end of the day, family is what matters most. Being great is only part of it. Legacy includes passing along your talents and skills to others, and that includes children and those that you can mentor along the way. Kobe Bryant gave me so, you know, so much amazing delight as both a fan and a reporter. I got to see two championships and three of his four All-Star Game MVPs. I was there for some of the USA basketball run, too. So many of his games at the Garden against the Knicks or his matchups with the Nets, I think of him playing streetball at Rucker Park. He loved basketball so much that he was willing to play anywhere at any time. That makes him an honorary New Yorker. I think we all have a certain Mamba mentality here in the Big Apple. Mamba, of course, is nickname in the NBA. Kobe Bryant schooled players on courts near and far, and when his incredible hoops journey was complete, he was authoring more greatness off the court. And that's the saddest part of the story. I've always said make sure to witness greatness as often as you can in sports. It's an honor to see players like Kobe live. I would have missed that game at the Garden last night. It reminded me of when my mom had said to me, son, get dressed, we're going to go pay our respects to Mickey Mantle at Yankee Stadium the morning that he died. Kobe, here's to you. Rest in peace, legend. Hoop in heaven with Gigi. We'll miss you. That's your sports. I'm Bobby C.
And welcome back on February the 9th. Our next guest will hold her Sunday songwriting showcase on open mic event. It's going to be a big one. Joining us with all the details, we have a, a preview, too, of our artist, and uh, she's a curator, Chelsea W. Chelsea C. I, I would like to just say, I am Chelsea I am. Yes, that works. That's, yeah. th that works? Yeah. That's what they call you? <laughs> yes. I am Chelsea I am. Yes. All right. Tell us about the, some of the work that you're doing and that you've been doing in our community. Sure. So uh, Songwriter Sunday originally started in Harlem. Uh -huh. um, we'll be celebrating five years in November, but we've been at I-9 Bistro on 53 Bruckner Boulevard since about June or July of 2019, and the Bronx has been beautiful to us. We have it every second and fourth Sunday uh -huh. every month. So There you go. Yeah. And that's, uh, what's that, on a Friday night, Saturday night? Uh, Every second and fourth Sunday of the month. Every fourth. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So we can go down there and see you, have some food and all that stuff. Yep, and exactly. You're doing your thing on stage. Do yes. you bring a crew with you or you're doing it solo? I have a crew, um, but I play solo there as well. I'm a singer, songwriter, touring artist as well. So this is something that I love to do to just create a platform for other artists to present and showcase their work in an intimate environment. Yeah, yeah. so we'll give your crew a shout out. Yeah. So shout out to the Songwriter Sunday crew, Brian Durier, who's my co-host, James Calvin, and all my friends. All right. And yeah. what do you have there? Uh, my guitar. All right. Is that <laughs> the acoustic guitar or what, what uh, kind of acoustic guitar? Acoustic electric ovation. All right. Yeah. There you go. And you rock that? I do. Got serious skills? That's what they say. So we got to come down there and check you out. Yes. Right? <laughs> all, right. all right. How long have you been doing it? Um, I've been doing music since I was younger. I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I started doing music in church. Cincinnati, OH10, yes. Ohio. Yes. Yeah. And I've played a, a number of instruments, but guitar just stuck for me. Mm hmm So, yeah. And um, did you sing in church or just play in, an instrument in church? Both. I sang in church. I played the piano in church. Um, in high school, I played steel drum, trumpet, and baritone. Well, yeah, all right. Yeah. And a little uh, Caribbean in you? Uh, I don't, actually. You don't? <laughs> you just like the steel drum. You just say, yes. hey, I like the way that sounds. Let yeah. Me let it's me hook it up. A great instrument. Yeah. Good, good, good. All right, so where do you want this to go? How far do you want it to go? I want it to go as far as possible. I this would love to. This is what you love. This is what you want to do. This is what you're passionate about. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very passionate about music and about the platform as well. So even if it could become something that's like a touring platform itself and we tour different cities and allow people to showcase their music in different cities, yeah, that would yeah. be great as well. But yeah. So do you have an open mic thing that's going on also? Yes, um, so the open mic um, is every second and fourth Sunday, and you can just come and sign up. It's free. Yeah, so you're um, not just playing. you got an open mic situation yes, going on. Yeah, yes. all right. And we have featured acts. So February 9th, um, we have Bronx own. Her name is Woman. That's her artist name. And also Emma Clay. So come out and see them as well. Yeah. But right. the entire event is about three hours. So in between the featured acts, we have open mic acts. So yeah. you get about five minutes to showcase your talent, and I'm sure you have some poetry skills you want to come down and show, right? You, you, you want me to come and do it? Sure. Yeah. Can I rap? <laughs> yeah. Can I sing? You can do anything. Can I dance? Yes. I'm asking if I can dance. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we'll tell you after. <laughs> <laughs> you can, it's going to be crowd participation? Yeah, you can, all right, you got a little yeah. something, something, like the Apollo Theater? All we'll, right. we'll, we'll make some space and you can break dance. I'm sure that's your forte. Right. I'd rather come and see you. Okay. But I'll, I'll do a little something. I'll come and I'll do an open mic thing. That would be cool. What song would you like me to sing? What's your favorite song? I don't know. It's about me. It's about you. But I'll do a little something, something. <laughs> okay, maybe some Luther. I don't know, Luther Vandross. Whoa! Yeah. I don't know anybody that can do. Well, I heard one person that was kind of close, but I don't think anybody can do Luther. Respect. Luther, that's a. Ooh, yeah. That's that's like a Kobe Bryant of, uh, mm. of singing, you know. Yeah. Yeah, that worth ethic uh, that he put into what he was doing was, was tight. I know. You know. And a lot of people like you, I know you like to follow stuff like that, too. Yes. Because that's what you got to do in order to be who you want to be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So where would you want to take it? You going to do CDs and all that stuff, and you want to do touring? Yes, my music is on every digital platform currently, Spotify, Apple Music, everything under I Am Chelsea I Am. Music vi videos available on my website and things of that nature, but... Uh. Um, I just came from Washington, D.C. I have the show coming up in Chicago. All right. And I actually have a show here in New York at Mercury Lounge on February 2nd. Look at that. So. Chicago, wait a minute. They have, uh, hmm, don't they have the 
the halftime of basketball over there? I'm not sure. Bobby C knows, because I think everybody's going over there to cover uh, the oh. basketball. I could, they don't call it the halftime. Oh, I know what you're talking about. The All-Star Game. The All-Star All Game. All-Star Game is uh, it's like the Valentine's half, yeah, Day the weekend. Halftime, the big halftime. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. All, I think that's going to be in Chicago. It and is. A lot of people are going out there. Yeah. So you're going to go out there before that, but you maybe I'll that's a spot for you to go to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be fun. So social media and all that stuff, where can we find you? You can find me at um, I am Chelsea I am. Mm -hmm. So that's my website, I am Chelsea I am dot com. Yeah. On Instagram, I am Chelsea I am. And if you're interested, uh, Songwriter Sunday NYC on Instagram. But it's also an Eventbrite page. So if you if you Google Open Mics in the Bronx, actually it comes up as well. There you go. So. I am Chelsea I am. Give her another big round of applause, everybody. Thank you. And once again, our love and prayers go out to, uh, and our condolences go out to the family of uh, Kobe Bryant, his fan, and friends. Thank you so much. We're going to miss him so much, yeah. you know. Never met him, but I met a lot of the people around him, mm. like uh, Shaq and everybody. Unfortunately, that's all the time we're for, that we have for today's show. I'd like to thank you, our guests, for tuning in and checking it all out. You can catch the Recablecast tonight at 5 and 10 p.m. or watch anytime on the web, bronxnet.org. That's where you go. And you can tune in Wednesday for an all-new episode with our host, Darren Hyme. For all of us here at Bronx Center, have a great and enjoyable day. And always remember this, what you are is God's gift to you. And what you make of yourself is your gift to God. So choose your choice and let your choice control the chooser. And remember, you know, you never know what can ha happen in life. Life has its ups and downs. So tell somebody you love them. Give them a hug. Let them know you love them. Let them feel you. Let them hear you. I'm Dr. Bob Lee. I'll see you over 107.5 WBLS. I love you all. Peace.